Hello and welcome back to another episode of Smart Art History. Today we look at a surrealism and the treachery of images. The treachery of images is a personal favorite of mine because it forces you to ask a simple question that has a seemingly simple answer. Though when you really begin to think about the implications of that answer, your whole world begins to fall apart. Do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. Though before I shatter your world, let's first take a minute to talk about the man himself. Magritte is a surrealist painter that never really thought of himself as an artist. This is a bit fun to consider as his treachery of images continues. If this is not a pipe, then clearly this is not an artist. The Magritte never really considered himself a painter, but rather a thinker that would simply use images to express himself. He was very well versed in philosophy and simply would use his paintings as a way to communicate his philosophical ideas in a visual format. Magritte's primary agenda was to express to us a simple idea and you could see the underlying theme across all of his other paintings. It is that the thing you want is never as simple as the thing you see, but always hiding just directly behind the thing that is in front of us. The issue with this is that you can never really remove the obstruction entirely, because the issue is not with the object, but within the thought and language itself. Which brings us back to the treachery of images. At first glance, the image seems quite simple in its message. It's a pipe. Though what is a bit odd is that below the pipe is a message written directly to the viewer. This is not a pipe. So if this isn't a pipe, what is it? On a view slightly below the surface, one would simply assume that this really is not a pipe, but simply a drawing of a pipe. It's a key. No, much more better. It is a drawing of a key. Even Magritte himself was once quoted as saying, the famous pipe, how people reproach me for it. And yet, could you stuff my pipe? No, it's just a representation, is it not? Of course, this does seem to be a bit on the nose. It's common sense, and no one would argue the opposite position. Although, consider this. If I were to show you this image, what would you say it was? This is a dog. This, this is an apple. This is a computer, a train, a Kanye, a Pikachu, a pipe? What appears to be a linguistic misstep is really an intentional design in the way that language was put together. For hundreds of years, it was believed that the names of things, in a way, came directly from the things themselves. Pikachu! Its name is Pikachu. That is one reason why you can look at a culture's language to understand the people of that culture better as a whole. For example, in Australia, there is an aboriginal tribe who speaks a language known as Gugu Yimithir. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but bear with me. This language does not have words for relative directions such as left and right. They only know absolute directions such as north and south. So, you don't really have a left or right hand. But, if you were to turn, you have a north and south hand. And once you turn back around, now you have a east and west hand. And because of the relationship that language has with reality, we can assume that these people not only have no words for relative direction, but no concept of relative direction at all. Though what Magritte is trying to tell us through this painting is that a word and its associated object have a totally arbitrary relationship. And this is where we begin to better understand what the true treachery of images actually is. Realism and realistic paintings play on resemblance. Resemblance is meant to point beyond the word to the object itself. It is a way of using images to bypass language to directly imprint the idea of an actual object within your head. It was this point that caused many artists to jump from the real to the surreal, to leave behind the world of realism and resemblance to a world of the abstract. The world where you could understand emotion and ideas without being bogged down by trying to relate the image to what you already know. It was a way of being more honest in art. Magritte, however, took a different approach to surrealism. He played directly with resemblance to push directly past what you think you know and send a more direct message that what you think is real is simply just a facade. The visual dependence on language is what Magritte really shows you in the treachery of images. In fact, it is the treachery of images. This is not a pipe, yes. Just as the word pipe written below is also not a pipe. And if that is true, then the whole sentence actually is a contradiction, which makes the whole painting complete nonsense, and everything begins to fall apart. So I ask you once more, if this is not a pipe, then what is it?
Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more Smart Art History, check out our Smart Art History playlist or just click on the link in the description. If you have any other topics you'd like me to cover on Smart Art History or if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more Smart Art fun.